Here we continue with chapter 12, looking at the evolution of the life of a star. And in this uh, video lecture, we're going to look at uh, section 11 of uh, chapter 12. And as mentioned in the previous uh, section, helium begins to fuse when um, the temperature reaches 100 million degrees Kelvin and what happens then is uh, the helium nuclei have enough energy as to collide with another one and, and click together and get the uh, form a, a binding and in that case um, the process that follows is uh, we have basically the bottom line is going to be the three heliums will form one carbon plus the radiation that comes out which is where the energy comes from from the, the stars but this process happens in two steps first we have uh, one helium nuclei nucleus colliding with another helium nucleus and forming a beryllium but very fast either the beryllium breaks into back into helium or it um, admits another helium forming a carbon. This, um, the carbon can stay as such or it can um, take a, a, another helium and form oxygen. But in, for most of the cases, this will be the predominant reaction, the end product. Eventually, uh, uh, oxygen will be formed out of this, but uh, it requires a little bit more of uh, time and temperature. The photons that come out are nothing but gamma rays, which are is the, the usual type of radiation that happens when, when you have nuclear reactions. The um, giant stars that are producing this helium fusion will be doing it for a long time, but not as long as for hydrogen. Hydrogen, uh, helium uh, fuses for about 10% of the time that hydrogen fused. Like for instance, in our sun, hydrogen will be fusing for 10 billion years, but helium only for 1 billion years. In spite of this, in spite of the fact that this stage, the helium fusion stage of a star, lasts about one-tenth of the hydrogen fusion uh, stage, when we look up with our telescopes into the sky, we see more of these guys, more of the more of the stars that are fusing helium than of this type, the hydrogen fusing stars. Because the luminosity here is uh, way larger than the luminosity here. Remember that these are giants, whereas these are main sequence stars. If um, if you look at my PowerPoint presentation and you click on this uh, slide, you're going to see an interesting case of um, the star that is producing variable luminosity. And it happens that under some circumstances, the star will get larger and then will contract a little bit and then will go back uh, to become large again and so on, changing its luminosity. And because of that, there will be more light and less light coming. But in this particular case, and um, we have, um, which is the case of uh, RS puppies, we have a flash of light coming and giving us the effect of uh, being reflected here on this side kind of sending a wave and then shrinking again and then doing it again. So we get pulses. And it is uh, the so-called uh, echo, which is not exactly an echo, but it's the change of luminosity and it is being reflected by the different regions of um, the dust in the different regions. There was an introduction to variable stars. Variable stars happen as a star becomes a red giant. Depending on the size and on the conditions, 
of the star in terms of mass and etc temperature uh, the star will uh, can go through a region in which this expansion is not uniform and the the star becomes uh, contracted and expanded and contracted and expanded changing its luminosity when that happens these stars are known as variable stars there are basically two categories of uh, variable stars the cephites and the lyra and they vary in in um, the periodicity of um, the pulses how fast uh, they oscillate and for this to happen it has to have a certain condition of size and temperature and um, that uh, set of conditions is obtained only in this region which is known as the instability strip and this is section 12 the looking at the cephites the cephiles um, as I mentioned they pulsate because of uh, they expand and contract the, the cephite goes uh, increases the it, its brightness and then begins to get dimmer and dimmer and goes back into being bright in a 5.4 period 5.4 day period and again this happens uh, because the layers get larger and expand so luminosity is changing the surface area is changing and the luminosity is changing now how do, how do we know what happens well turns out that when the the layers the outer layers are are expanding they're moving towards us and consequently they move fast enough as to have doppler shift the light that is being sent to us so we can see the um, a shift in the, the spectrum of the light and this is telling us that those layers are producing the they're, they're producing the light is uh, they are getting closer to us and the same thing happens when they are contracting as they move away from us the Doppler shift is going to be in the opposite direction and we can see that so because of that we know that um, the temp change in temperature varies oscillates between these uh, ranges and it happens only under certain conditions the, the conditions given by the so-called instability strip one analogy to this effect would be uh, boiling water in a pan so you put it on the on top of the fire you wait until it gets filled with vapor and at some point it's going to be so hot and the pressure is going to be so high that will lift the lid and release part of the gas so it is expanding and it is releasing gas and when that happens it cools down and falls down into compression again and the whole process gets repeated so this is kind of similar to what happens uh, to the outer layers of the star well again I ask you to please uh, stop uh, the video here at this point read the questions answer and then come back and look at the uh, at the response uh, at the answers here I'm gonna give them to you and there's more questions